So we're at week two. This is really exciting. We made it through week one. Everybody's doing well, and we're into week two. This week we're gonna cover brooder management, little things that you can add in or take out of your brooder to manage your chicks and make them a little healthier. A brooder can be a place where you lose some chicks. There's mortality throughout the entire process, not just processing at the end. So some of this stuff is gonna really save you from losing chicks while they're in the brooder. It can make a real big difference. So without any further ado, let's hop right into it. So now the birds are a week old, one week on these Cornish cross birds. And you can see the big difference in their flight feathers. You know, they're still fuzzy yellow puff balls of cuteness, um, but their primary flight feathers are starting to come in. You can see that. And the, that's what we're gonna be looking for as we start to think about bringing them outside. It's still a week, week and a half out from bringing them outside, depending on what the weather's gonna be like. But as these feathers start to come in, we're gonna watch that and you're gonna see that's where their primary growth is. They get a little bit bigger body mass wise, so the chicks are gonna go from really small to slightly less small. You can see them in the background all like trying to get that little fresh air there. Um, but those flight feathers is where you're gonna see a big, big difference. I'm gonna put this guy down. So what we're looking for is clean, healthy chicks without any respiratory problems, any eye problems. Uh, we're looking for feathers growing out. We're looking them to be exploratory and comfortable throughout the day in their brooding space. And uh, general overall, you know, just having them look good. If they look down and lethargic and bad, then you need to change something. If they look bright and happy and well-fed and well-watered, then you're doing it right. Now these birds, you know, have ready access to feed and water 24 hours a day. They have fresh, clean shavings. I've been keeping an eye on the shavings. If they tend to hang out in any one corner and that corner builds up manure or if it's around their water where they splash water, uh, that's something I wanna check and change out as we go. But looking one week in now, uh, they're looking really good, really happy, excited to see how this batch does full time. Thursday today. I have both doors open with the nets down to protect from wild birds coming in, but uh, it's warm outside. I'm weed whacking, so I'm just nice and hot right now, but so are the birds. And noticed as I walked by, a lot of them laying out, spread out, uh, looking a little heat stressed. So I opened both doors, increased the airflow. Um, they seem much happier. Throughout the day, I'll also swap out their water just because that well water that I have comes out at 53 degrees. And on a really, really hot day, if you get a really hot day, uh, swapping the water out from warm water into cool water, which that'll help the birds cool down. Uh, so I'm going to go swap their water out. Then I'm going to get some water. It's time for lunch. So it's Friday. It's going swimmingly well. All the birds alive. My mortality rate, zero right now. Uh, I had three chicks dead on arrival. I had a few questions on this, uh, what my mortality in the brooder has been so far. Actually, I actually had one die. One die in the brooder, three were dead on arrival. But other than that, the birds have all survived. Today, I did add in some higher capacity feeders and make sure I've been refilling the waters. It's been warm outside. And uh, with so many birds in the brooder, they're just crushing the feed. I mean, they're putting it back, which is great because they're growing and that's their purpose. Um, so a higher capacity feeder, keeping an eye on feed and water level. I'm going to go out shopping and buy some shavings today to put some more shavings down with this many birds. You know, you can see the shavings have turned a darker color. That's because their manure is building up. So I'm going to keep layering fresh shavings on top of it. I just ran out, so I got to go get more. That comes with being unprepared. Somebody's excited that it's morning. Maybe they had their coffee and I haven't had their coffee yet. <laughs> but um, going well. Uh, just at this point, maintaining feed water, looking forward to getting them outside, but it's still too early for that. Um, we'll do a video tomorrow, and uh, yeah, that's it. So it's Saturday, and I went to the feed store. Every time I talk, they freak out. Gotta like prime them next time. Uh, Saturday, I went to the feed store and got a bale of shavings right there. Uh, they're about four dollars, four and change. Uh, I have an agri agricultural tax exemption, uh, which helps me in on sales tax, but. I got the bale of shavings and now I'm keeping an eye on because I have like 275, 265 birds in there. Um, they're pooping a lot and their shavings get wet, especially under the feeder or the water with the nipples on it. It's really wet, but they're dropping manure and I want to keep some fresh shavings and layer it as I go. I don't stir it up a lot, um, but I layer it and put fresh stuff on top to keep the moisture level down, to keep the air fresher, and I'd rather have it smelling like fresh pine in there than fresh manure. Uh, and that keeps birds a lot happier, a lot healthier, 
Um, just in general, you know, if you have a bale of this, if you're doing it on a small scale, you may only need one of these things. Uh, I put in two originally. This will be my third one, and depending on how soon they go out, I may tap into a fourth just because there's so many birds here in a small space. Um, that's Saturday. It's Sunday. It's family chores day. I actually didn't turn the video camera on this morning. I just enjoyed doing chores with my daughter. It gave Kate the morning to sleep in. She's suffering from a severe outbreak of the uh, poison sumac and uh, needs the time to rest. So Mabel and I did the chores this morning. Didn't turn on, like I said, didn't turn on the video for that, but got the sweet picture. Look at this. It's like, hey Mabel, that's a cute outfit. What, this old thing? She's a total farm girl. She loves it. Um, so, with the brooder and the chicks today, uh, no big thing to report. I had one mortality, one chick died, it had some weird thing with its butt. Uh, I had treated it and I had taken care of it, but sometimes you get a genetically weaker uh, bird and there's just nothing you can do about it. I found it uh, dead this morning. It looked great yesterday. Uh, why it passed away overnight, I don't know. But I got questions from CM Yates and uh, Old Hawkins, this is my note, uh, from you guys on YouTube asking about do you check for pasty butt uh, and you know another pasty butt question both on pasty butt and what pasty butt is is there's a buildup of manure that dries right outside the vent uh, the vent is the chicken word for bee hole um, <clears throat> but in the back of the chicken you get pasty butt and if it locks up their bee hole they can't get anything out they go septic and they die uh, it's horrible uh, but it happens but if you get pasty butt then I do keep an eye on it for it this is part of like staying and watching your birds every day uh, for a couple minutes see all, all the birds see if they're doing well see if they're like a little shaky and groggy or if they have any buildup of dark matter uh, on their backside if you do have that I have a, an area right next to the shed not a far walk at all uh, where I run warm water I'll use warm water just warm soapy water and just very carefully kind of soak that area keeping the chick as comfortable as I can although it's not a you know the chick doesn't like the process and just break up that manure you don't want to rip it off because you'll rip out the feathers and you might injure the bird and it might start to bleed which is really bad uh, but with just some warm soaks and a you know washcloth or your fingers I use my fingernails to break up the little poop clump and you get poop on your fingernails and it's part of being a chicken farmer but whatever uh, it's better than losing the baby chick or letting it suffer um, so I do check for pasty butt on a regular basis. Uh, that's how I treat it with just that warm water and I just kind of tease it apart. Warm the chick back up, make sure, you know, put it back in and see if it's doing well, if it's running around, if it's eating and drinking again, I'll come back later, you know, half an hour to an hour later and see if the bird's doing all right. Uh, that's it for pasty butt. Other than that, you'll hear me in general just say, you know, feed, water, temperature, and shavings. I've been keeping the shavings clean uh, and making sure that the birds are well balanced temperature wise. And um, that's, that's it. I mean, it, it can be very simple. Uh, you can get very nuanced with all this stuff and really get into the, the science and the information and I recommend all that. But if you're just starting out, make sure the birds are comfortable, make sure they're fed, make sure they're watered, make sure they have proper temperature and airflow and the shavings aren't getting too wet and caked up and you'll do all right. Uh, it is something that's easy to get into and easy to do something on your home scale, but people make careers out of it and become productive and efficient and effective at growing chickens, and those are the people who become professional farmers. Um, yeah, that's it, that's good. Sunday is a great day. I had uh, a good mix of family time and work time today. I uh, got to have some pause for reflection sitting on my front porch while eating lunch, and now let's head on to Monday. Now remember, for this series, I'm gonna raise a full production batch on my farm, which is 240 birds. I raise batches of 240 in rotation throughout the entire year. I'm also gonna be raising a home scale batch that is just one chicken tractor in my backyard, 25 birds, something that you can do at home on 0.05 acres, so a small, small amount of acreage. Fertilize your lawn, grow some chickens for home, maybe sell a few to family and friends to cover your costs. Not that hard. For both the home scale batch and the production batch, I'm using the design from the book that I just wrote. It's published. It's out on Amazon, Stress-Free Chicken Tractor Plans by John Soskovich. If you go to farmmarketingsolutions.com forward slash plans, that's an easy way to get there, or you can just search for it on Amazon. But yeah, that's my shameless plug for this video. So it's Monday, and I want to show you a very technical, very crazy, very expensive brooder tool that you can't live without. BAM! A shovel! <laughs> Actually, it's an old shovel that I found at a tag sale. But, have a shovel, because you see this waterer right there has the nipples on it, the little drinkers that we have for the chicks and the chickens out in the field. And as they drink from that, it splashes a little bit and it gets wet under there. 
And uh, because they spend time under there, you can see them drinking right now. And their manure builds up, it gets wet, typically around feeders and waterers. Now that water is suspended from the ceiling so it doesn't move where the feeders are on the ground and they can move. So the feeders, every time I fill them up, I uh, put them in a new place that kind of spreads the manure around, stirs up the chips a little bit, and the waterers, because I don't move them around, I take out my very technical, very expensive tool, the shovel, and I scoop it out. Uh, having your brooder be dry is really important. That's why I bought the extra shavings you saw this week and why I have so many birds in here that I've been on top of the shavings because you don't want that moisture to build up. It causes problems down the road. Problems that not, you're, you're not gonna like. Plus, you know, just keep the birds healthy. Get an old shovel, keep it at the brooder. You want it close to the brooder so that when you need it, it's right there. Uh, and then have a place that you know you're gonna put these wet shavings um, wherever it is on your piece of property. Uh, they're full of nitrogen. They're already pre-moist. The wood chips have carbon, so they're great in a compost heap. If you got it, I throw mine in the compost pile. Yeah, it's good, it's great. Let's go on to Tuesday. So it's Tuesday, it's the end of week two. Week two of me having these birds on my farm. Now, they're in the brooder, they're getting big, they're growing really, really well. I'm really happy with this batch. And uh, you know, 14 to 21 days, or 16 to 21 days, you start to think about moving them out on grass. Now you can brood out on grass, there's people who have done that. Um, I brood in a shed, it's a little more temperature controlled, it's a little safer uh, for me. <clears throat> But you can brood out on grass. If you brood in a shed or indoors or in your garage or wherever, in a barn, uh, you eventually have to move them outside. They're getting so loud. Uh, they're getting so big. Look at all the little butts right here. This line of butts. Hard to do this. I never mastered the point. There we go. Anywho, uh, distraction. So now I'm thinking about moving them from inside to outside, out on pasture. So I'll have my normal batch of birds, this chicken tractor's right here, and then I'm gonna have one that I keep separate, bring out to my front yard and show you that you can grow them out on pasture at scale, or you can grow them in your backyard, feed your family, feed your friends, have enough chicken for the entire year for your family, taste delicious, mm, so good. So these chicken tractors are actually set in the position that they were from my last batch. So I have to reset these this week, get everything prepped out in the field for my move on week three, have this one, moved over into my yard and prep that for the move week three birds are growing great if you want to follow along with this series if you want to you know just keep track of it if you go to the link in the description for this video or in the i button that pops up right there it's farmmarketingsolutions.com forward slash how to raise chickens how to raise chickens for meat uh, whatever the URL is, that's why I make links because the URL is long. Um, but you can go there, see week to week all the things that are happening. You can click on whatever wink you want to go and rewatch. It's a good time, you know. I spent a little time on it. Scott and I have been working on the website. Thanks for following along on the journey so far. Thanks for being a part of this. I'm super excited. And until next week, I will see you out in the field.